everybody. Thank you for making it along tonight. I hope you're well. Tonight, I have my wonderful brother, Stephen Denman, with me tonight, and we will be discussing our book that we have written over the last six months, and it is called Mysterious Realities. But first and foremost, I must introduce you to the wonderful Stephen, who has been an amazing part of this channel, guys. He has really helped lift up, especially the Hidden History series. So welcome, Stephen Denman. Hi, Zach. How's everything going? Very good, my brother. Well done for all the amazing hard work you've put into this channel over the last six months and knowledge that you've wanted to bring to everybody. And thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and, and how you've kind of got into this knowledge because you've been into this field of knowledge for a very long time. So tell us, how long have you been involved in this? Um, since I was a little child, when we grew up, it's uh that house, that terraced house in Chatton Dean in the Medway Towns in North Kent here in the United Kingdom. I've always been um, very much interlinked with the supernatural, with the paranormal. It's natural to me, uh, you know, my sole personality. It's almost like there's a an immediate resonance and a, an immediate connectivity that goes on in me. Um, literally, I'm able to autonomically um without even thinking just tune in to the frequencies and the vibrations shall we say of the astral plane uh the frequencies and vibrations of ultra terrestrials extraterrestrials sort of light beings astral spirits it's just part of my actual incarnation here you know when i was a very small child chat and dean i did initially become very concerned and anxious with a lot of these interactions because i didn't really fully understand what was going on when you're a child of say four or five so if you go back to say 1976 1978 maybe 1980 1982 around that kind of period so so, Steve, tell us like, with our experiences, because we had a lot of experiences as a child and you have continued throughout your life to have a lot of paranormal UFO experiences like myself. But yeah. you particularly, I have been with you on several occasions and we have both, you know, both been looking to the skies and you pointed out things that I haven't seen initially. But then when I've tuned in or you've helped me see them, I've actually seen objects flying through the sky on i think three occasions four occasions of you at least yeah um one which was very interesting i found was when we were down at whitstable and we saw that flying over the water That's and right. uh you were over excited with uh yeah what you saw i was over excited that day because nobody really kind of nobody was believing a lot of what i was seeing because it was a very individualized experience and, you know, if you spent years and years telling people in emails, phone calls and face to face, whether it's family uh, or other relatives or friends and so forth, work colleagues, what's going on with UFO activity and people just kind of give you the frown and yeah, whatever. And then, you know, when you actually have a firsthand witness account with, you know, you, Zach, and we're standing there at Whitstable Harbour and we see this orange orb suddenly move out around 20 feet above the water on a very yeah. clear night with a full moon. And we can see it hovering above the water with its reflection. No, so we knew it wasn't a boat. It was moving at phenomenal speed, making no noise. And the reflection of the light was actually on the water as it moved. Right. So that that yeah. proved that it was actually a some sort of floating object. Uh, very interesting. And if it, we watched it within, I think, a matter of only, I don't know, maybe in a matter of less than five minutes, it seemed to mm. traverse the entire Thames estuary. I was on the South South Essex coast, up near South End on Sea, around that area. It was it was it was mind boggling. It was incredible to watch, and that is one small example. You know, I remember when we were down in the village of Falkland in northeast yeah. Somerset. Yes, and you know, I pointed in 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 the, in the pure southern, blue sky uh, and that little silver disc flying over. Yes, very shimmering, gl glittering in the in the sunlight, and it, 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 at first it almost sh shimmered into visibility. It was almost like it was slightly translucent mm. because it was operating outside. Its, its own vibratory rate was literally slowing down into this linear space time, so it become tangible. It seems solid because there's so much we could discuss here. There is, there is so vast the subject. It really is. 
we will be taking this on as a regular series and actually discussing this. And you can also join up the membership where we will be doing extended talks on various subjects within the hidden history. And the, the thing that I'm really key with is I don't want to hide information from anybody. So I want to make sure information is getting out. So what we're doing with this membership section is to kind of delve deeper into these subjects. So it's a kind of extra knowledge if you want to know further about this information if you have to know more and also as well just please know all the membership money goes into supporting this channel and making this channel bigger and better let's talk about the birth of this book steve so we we wanted to write this because i think at the start of beginning of 2020 so much information was removed from the internet and taken down and people were censored and put back and all this information is public that we wrote in this book. And Stephen, mostly Stephen researched. I, I give him the credit for that because he did a huge amount of in-depth research into this. So the first chapter we discuss, decided to embark on was about ley lines. And we just want to discuss a little bit about ley lines on this episode. A lot of people don't understand, first and foremost, that we have had ancient civilizations on this planet that used to use these ley lines as a way of getting to one place to another. They also use them as shrines of ways to expand their consciousness. And I do believe that they would use these shrines to almost go into dimensional, to go into yeah. other realms, astral realms and other frequencies of reality. Mm -hmm. But what has happened is over the last... You, Correct me if I'm wrong, Steve. I would say the last 2,000 years, it has been heavily repressed, this information where ley lines and sacred sites have been inverted. There's been an inversion put on reality of what these sites are. So, Stephen, tell me more about what ley lines are and, and give us an insight into that. So let's just have a... Well, I think the first thing is the, 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 the time period that you've mentioned or the duration of time or time span of how long... The level of repression and suppression, uh, attempted deletion and censorship of the ancient knowledge concerning uh, ley lines, what their potential is. I say it, it's not. I wouldn't say I wouldn't go back uh, exactly two thousand years. I bring it forward. I think the initial stages perhaps started during the development of the Roman Empire, and I think of the Druids or the Druidic priests uh, uh, that ruled over the Celtic Britons, the Irish Celtic tribes and the Gaulish Celtic tribes of Northern Europe, and the deliberate destruction of, of megalithic stone structures that were obviously built on junctures where the ley lines, the geomagnetic ley lines crossed. These were interdimensional portals. So the earth lights, as they're known in terms of supernatural folklore, would arise from these areas and the druids knew how to control these earth lights and they would also use the ley lines for healing purposes and also ceremonial purposes for the worship of what they believe were astral deities astral goddesses uh and therefore presumably astral spirits so they served multiple purposes but yeah the kind of the slow shall we say suppression censorship over what the ley lines were and what they could, they could be used for and what their future potential was did begin around them but it really wasn't until the collapse of the roman empire and the emergence of the early medieval period uh, and during that time was what's called the dark ages the dark ages mm. was a time where knowledge was taken by the priesthoods which is now known as the holy roman empire that was neither holy roman or an empire was the early stages of the Roman Catholic Church. So these priesthoods uh, confiscated these archaic levels of uh, sacred wisdom from the different tribal groups and communities after the collapse of the Roman Empire. Uh, they made sure that uh, there was no way the Druids could ever come back to power uh, or the temple priests of you know, the indigenous tribal groups that had existed long before the suppression had started. So well, we have to remember the, the first thing that Julius Caesar did when he came to Britain was kill all the kings and druids, all the, the, the druids. Yes, that's and, right. And yeah, all the, yeah. the magic and the witches. And all that was the first order of the Roman legions was the complete uh, annihilation of all druid priests if they were seen on site because, um, you know, Gaius Julius Caesar and, and the Imperium Romana, the Roman Empire, knew they yeah. were the, the, the ultimate community leaders. They were the... 
And uh, just, just could I, sorry, could I just interject in the sense, it, and also as well, people just understand druids weren't all light. There was obviously darkness within that. Obviously, it wasn't like they were all the good guys, but they had a connection to this magic and they understood this magic, which is our knowledge, is ancient knowledge, which we can all regain. Steve, sorry. Yeah, well, the druids like witches were heavily... Um heavily the, the the perception of them was deliberately distorted over many generations to turn those communities that had lost that knowledge i.e in the early medieval period and the dark ages against them that druids and witches were seen as beings of malevolence of evil that had yeah. to be condemned hunted down removed and the social structures that were around them so people were going along with the the, the mass confirmation and suppression and and actually a self um censoring their own original knowledge base that was actually was there designed to set them free on a spiritual level so yeah the the a minority of druids were involved in so we say subversive practices like sacrificial ritualism etc but mm. they were a very small minority the vast majority of the druids were actually vegetarian and vegan by today's standards they fully understood the astral plane they were very expert in understanding sound. You have to remember it took 20 years of training to be a druid or a druidess. Right. Britain, Britain was the sceptered isle of over 60 to 70,000 students for hundreds of years who traveled from all over the world to train as druids. Wow. You know, the, the classical Greeks uh, admired many of the druids, and it's even rumored that many of the Greek philosophers were either influenced by or perhaps themselves had trained as druids churches were built on these ley lines chapels churches cathedrals the bigger the building of religious worship in terms of christianity the more powerful the ley line and so, would you say that the ley lines would go back to uh hyperborea to tartaria that kind of knowledge it's kind of back right back then that we kind of had this information and it's just kind of got lost and lost over more and more over time well, you could go back even further to the civilization that had existed on the planet Mars well over 1 million BC. They had ley line conjunctions built over the Cydonia region, yep. one example. Then you've obviously got Hyperborea, northern Russia, the Arctic Circle region, the North Polar region. And then you've got obviously the civilization of Atlantis, both on the Atlantean constant and the Atlantean islands. They yep. were very much into ley lines, bringing it forward to the civilization of Tataria, which was really actually a, a, a pseudo Scythian type civilization. From the I mean, we could also as well, just with Tartaria, we give it reference as Tartaria, but it was an old civilization. Yeah. The exact information, everybody. Yeah, we're all still searching for this information about Tartaria. This is the quest we're on. So we want to find this out. But it certainly was, no doubt an advanced civilization and they had advanced knowledge not in the way we see advanced today and just saying on about ley lines is that a lot of people yeah think they only exist on planet earth they exist right through our galaxy there's nodes throughout this whole universe mm -hmm. and very possibly that and it would make sense this that craft and ufos could actually almost jump in and out of these ley lines so that is would would explain the reason why ufos ex are, are sighted around ley lines wouldn't you think so that it would explain why they seem to flicker in and out of visibility because they're mm. shifting their frequency and vibration. The molecular structure of the hull of those spaceships is moving into another dimensional uh, expanse somewhere else, tuning in, tuning out, using the ley lines to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So Stonehenge is probably the most classical ley line that we've heard of and people know of and come to Britain to visit and everyone goes to Stonehenge. But what would you say Stonehenge is? Because I'm always very suspicious about actually, is that a real circle? What's your outlook on Stonehenge? I do not believe it was constructed by humans, I believe. And um, this is quite left field. I believe that there was a race of giants, at least four types on this earth. One of those groups built Stonehenge. Yep. Its purpose was multiple. Um, it was an astronomical device. It was a, um, a chronological device uh, measuring and understanding linear space-time as opposed to the timelessness of the astral plane. I, I don't know the exact scientific details of that. That's just what I feel on a, a much more psychical level, that something very much more profound was going on with the convergence of the ley lines running under Salisbury Plain in that part of Wiltshire. Yeah. And I also believe that the actual structure that is there now 
um, has been deliberately being messed with um, by who and what we cannot say. Um, but I know that the original structure was more symmetrical. It wasn't rough, um, uneven, unsymmetrical, hewn rock placed together, you know, plonked together in a, in a sort of a circle shape. It, Can I just, in, more... just come in there, Steve, just say to anybody, because I know there's a lot of American viewers who watch my channel, and with Stonehenge, where it's placed, uh, you had the A3, was it? The A or the A303, they actually planted right through and cut through the actual ley line through with with a very like, a, like a main road yeah. intersection yeah. of the road and it's definitely disrupted the energy there so this is seems to be an ongoing process that where there's ley lines you're you'll find that there's there's roads or mass building and and shopping complexes stuff like this so it inverts the energy or reinforces the energy of whatever they place there, right? That's right, yeah. And, and that's exactly what's happened, it, not just in Britain. You look at what happened with Twyford Down, where they literally, the ley lines yeah. running through that area of natural beauty yeah. was completely um, destroyed. And oh, well, they the actually lines. took all the oaks up, didn't they? They took yeah. all the ancient trees up, which actually used to be classed as treason in this country, am I right? And saying that yeah. actually you, there was a point which was quite interesting yeah, so if you took oak. an oak tree down yeah. as class to trees, and that's pretty incredible. But yeah, so that was thrown out of the window. <laughs> uh, but then you, you have to remember that what was the favourite tree species of the Druids? Oaks, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So not only that, Ireland the same. You look at County Meath, the Hill of Tara, they've built all these different roadways all over their intersections, literally disrupting the, uh, the, 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 the unique geomagnetic ley lines running and crisscrossing that whole area in the Boyne Valley in, in Eastern Ireland. Yeah. So it's the same everywhere. You'll probably find the same across mainland Europe and hundreds of other locations globally. And if it's not a roadway, they'll like maybe in places like Switzerland in central, Europe, they'll just drill straight to tunnel through. And because so, ley lines aren't just on the surface, they go 20, 30, 40, 50 feet and more below ground. Of course. So they, that again is disrupting. If there's quartz crystal under there, that actually holds the resonance of a specific type of ley line. It can be damaged or disrupted. So, yeah, it's 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 kind of an interdimensional level of conflict that's going on. It's invisible to most, unseen to most, but it's about ultimately one thing: the ongoing control of human consciousness. That's what the geomagnetic ley lines is really about: expanding human consciousness on an interdimensional intergalactic level and allowing human beings to reconnect mm. to their true spiritual potential, not just on planet earth, understanding it as mother earth and therefore mother nature, but also what lies beyond this solar system. Yes. So it's, um, I mean, human consciousness is technically unlimited. It's, it's boundless at, at its ultimate potential. And, you know, that's all I need to say on that. And it's a closing down bit by bit. So over time, a lot of people think that this is just going to happen in one lifetime. That uh, You understand that we have a soul loop, guys. So there's, there's, you know, if we get caught in that soul loop, we're just going to keep going round and round and keep living the same old the patterns and yeah. keep going round. Exactly. So we, we understand that these geomagnetic lines will place that. So the more inversion if you like that's put on top of them the more it inverts our spiritual being so in the sense so steve just come bringing it up to date now in the sense yeah. of where we are with ley lines and what we are we i am very conscious because i i visited a lot of lay centers and sacred sites in england and over europe and places yeah. and i know you can tap back into this energy so there sure. is a way uh, and people need to be aware of this. So you need to first be aware that there's geomagnetics underneath us. Without it being aware to them, you're never going to be able to interact with that energy. I believe that if you meditate and you actually tune into the environment you're in and spend time there and actually feel the circle you're in, you will actually start to reintegrate that energy into your body and it's all still there guys it's not disappeared it's still here on planet earth so i feel that we can reintegrate this energy and i think that's part of the book that me and Stephen are, are brought brought together is that's again part of this reason for to do that is to help people remember this information help people ignite this information and bring it into their consciousness so they can 
bring that flame, that inner flame and light themselves up. And that's that's what we're trying to do. But Steve, what what do you feel about that? Because I do feel that there's this energy we can reignite. I do, but I think it starts with your own physical and and you know your, your own physique, your own biological health. Yeah. And if people are alcoholics, if they're heavy smokers, they're eating lots of processed food, high sugary diets, and their pineal gland is calcified in some way, maybe they're drinking lots of fluoridated water from the the public water supplies. The, these things have to to stop and be reversed. So initially, the, the change has to come from within, and also the, the the sole personality of any individual that wants to attune to the ley lines and understand their higher potential through that method really has to be honest about their own self awareness. How self aware is are they, and what's the reasons why they're wanting to do that? And as long as it's not based on some sort of ego centric you know was gonna mind trip, yeah uh like some sort of new age <laughs> flunking out kind of process then they should be okay but start so and first. this is yeah. i you said it there steve this is the problem i see and including the the, the spiritual people that that visit these sites um that they have so so big egos about yeah. their 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 presence and who they are and more about them than the actual process really yeah yeah Yes, and, and uh, we're, we're, that's the real problem we all have, and I think people need to break the ego. Um, what you think you know, you don't know. That's what yeah. I've kind of – more I learn, the more less I know. That's what I feel, the way I feel about life and the more open I am to ideas because from what I see, the way people are taught is that in within the egos is they're taught within the ego to believe they're right, and they yeah, stay in that right. little mind prison. You got to remember everything to do with ley lines is everything to do with that everything that is not based on the ego because you're stepping outside the self That's for right. a temporary period outside of space time, and you know I, I I can recall numerous situations where I and again it's it's an unconscious process not one of you can prepare the body you know in terms of your your, your kind of biological health but when you go out. It, it, the receptivity, it, the tuning in process is not something that I don't say it's odd. Maybe for some people, you you can't consciously tune into it. It's almost like a it's almost like a conscious dreamscape. In, yeah. in sort of like there's a sort of a slow motion effect to it. So let, let's just explain that a little bit. But so when you when you wake, like if anybody's out there has experienced uh, like a lucid dreaming state, and that's where you you wake up and you you might feel you're you're in a dream and then you awake again that that is the lucid dream in what you could call astral traveling you know that's the state you're in you can be conscious in it you can be unconscious in it it just depends who you are like the lucid dreaming state is really crucial and i think the world we live in in the west it it, it, it takes us away from this so we keep in the brain we keep in the mind we keep in the numbers we keep in the facts the fact checks and all this stuff and you know we keep in this we we pre in prison ourselves through it when actually there is an ethereal energy we can tap into of knowledge which is outside of us which i do believe all knowledge is outside of us it's not something inside of us and it's all around us and we can tap into this but the more the ego is in play and in work it will reinforce that prison it taps us out of this energy and to tune into these ley lines we have to step out of that so this energy that we're tapping into ley lines and do you feel that it's still being used by the elite do you feel the elite are still using this energy in, in, in this, this this ethereal lay energy what do you feel about that well the elites um have a rigid and uh, sorry a ritualistic mindset so they they adhere to numerology and astrology but also to the various festivals in you know, the celtic type festivals i think you like beltane and samhain and so forth you know this these are connected to uh, traditionally to things like witchcraft but also to um british druidism and irish druidism so yeah they do and they will perform those rituals um on those key dates and also in conjunction with the full moon and and will do so on pacific ley lines so they are you they're they're creating a deliberate uh, malevolent inversion of the natural uh, frequencies and vibrations of those geomagnetic ley lines. So yes, they most certainly do use them for their own uh, nefarious purposes. Yes. Do you feel that there's still positive sites that are activated in the world, and it's yes. not all 
remote places, very remote. And what, I mean, for example, the Himalayan mountain range, the Tian Shan mountains, you look at places like the the, uh, the Kunlun mountains, these are the Altai mountain range as well, uh, the Caucasus mountains, uh, you know, high altitude places where most human beings have never been, where it's almost impossible to carry out quarrying or mining, you know, and dynamiting out an area or tunneling through or putting a road or a rail network in, you know, and there's no, obviously cities haven't been built in those areas. They're still pretty pristine in terms of frequency and vibrational uh, resonance. Uh, those ley lines, there will be a lot of supernatural activity. I'd say a large amount of the really remote areas in parts of still, say, Arizona, uh, perhaps in Nevada, uh, Utah, places like that. And, uh, you know, many other areas, maybe Washington State in, you know, in the United States of America and many areas across around the Great Lakes in Canada and, and, and numerous other locations where, there's, there's virtually no human settlements, like tiny hamlets or villages, one road going in, one road out, not any kind of rail network. There hasn't been a history of resources uh, extraction and mass mining going on in those areas, you know, for gold and silver or, you know, gemstones or whatever. So those areas are still pretty pristine. And I'd say there is ancient, ancient areas where there's a lot of woodland and forested uh, expanse they are definitely going to be uh i can i can imagine very powerful centers of ley line activity in terms of supernatural presences of astral spirits i mean look at the appalachian mountains the rocky mountains and so forth in the united states the native american folklore to do with the yeah Yeah. the supernatural activity that was going on in in the geomagnetic ley line areas where there was a lot of convergence is phenomenal i feel america is a missing massive missing parts of the puzzle and it was completely decimated i do believe 1800s and look at the research if anybody hasn't seen already please look at the world fairs in the hidden history this this is all real information and, and it can be quite disturbing for some to see this because it does change and alter a lot of what we think we know so, uh, but understand that the East Coast, certainly the East Coast of America was inhabited with some very, uh, well, incredible architecture. I can't say what yeah. who the beings were exactly, but the the architecture was amazing. And there's no doubt that the, the World Fairs was some sort of very bizarre ritual because they pulled all these down. I think the biggest one which shocked me from research was doing the Chicago fair. Oh yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. Unbelievable. And the, 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 the length of building and yeah. Okay. And people have, I've seen in the comments beautiful. that people yeah. have said that yeah. these could be temporary structures, but you've got to bear in mind to even to build temporary structures on that amount of people working on them, they have to build foundations. So this is just not possible in the time scale that they said it was built. It's just not possible. And uh, please, as I said, please look at that episode if you haven't already. I just but, one, one thing I'd say about the Chicago World Fair that I found fascinating about, about many of the, the photographs was how beautiful it the, was. Yeah, and the giant artificial lake that they built and these all these greco roman temples and 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 and, uh, classical greek looking uh statues Mm. and there was something quite epic and beautiful but it reminded was it almost looked like it was like a cityscape from atlantis i found that interesting and well it's very possible we've discussed this before but you know it's very possible that when atlantis sunk that actually they would have hopped over to America and actually set up on the East Coast. It kind of yeah. makes a lot of sense. There was two phases of destruction in Atlanta, as you know, a yeah. much older uh, phase and a newer phase of destruction. And it went from being the Atlantean continent to a, an Atlantean continent that was smaller with Atlantean islands. The main continent was destroyed, and then there was even more scattered Atlantean islands. And eventually they, the inundation and further uh, mass flooding occurred and they were destroyed and you know uh, sort of subsurface tectonic activity and they also sunk into the atlantic ocean and yet the survivors in stages went into places like brazil so, i mean central america and south america not just north america when mm. it comes to atlantis and also influences from great tataria it, it, it is absolutely incredible amount of hidden uh, concealed and, and suppressed knowledge 
uh, that it'd be the Spanish can- conquistadors and also the Catholic priests that went in there for 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 hundreds of years mm. were seeing many of these things. Much of it was recorded um, in Spanish, Portuguese, and in Latin. But a lot of these um, archives are secret, and they are literally, shall we say, kept in subterranean facilities below the Vatican City State. A lot of this is not now publicly accessible knowledge that a student at a college or university can go, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll go. And, and it's look. almost like we've we've gone so down the rabbit hole of this reality and since the Industrial Revolution that we've gone down that reality that it, it really is quite impossible. But well, It's not impossible. I don't believe that. But it's very difficult to to actually pull people out of that and actually see that there was this reality existing. So what we've done, and this is my motivation, is that we built societies on lies. And this is very, very dangerous. This is this is then bringing it to where we are now. This creates all confusion, distortion, and inversion, and creates a real disharmony in reality. So, yeah. you know, this is another reason why we wrote the book: is we we want to explore these realities, and we're not going to make stuff up when we 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 talk about stuff. We have looked at this and information, and it is all there for you to look into deeper, look into further. But it just feels like the ley lines of this planet have been so disrupted and obviously you've got bigger systems like CERN and things like this that have been introduced, which would be definitely, I don't know enough science about CERN, but it would definitely have an effect on the frequencies of the planet. Of course it would. That, 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 that would not, it's such a huge experiment. I, I actually think there's, isn't there a few of them around the world uh, as lot, well? Lot, there's there's I mean, actually, yeah. I mean, so the, I mean, the large had the large hadron collider um built in in the in central switzerland is is uh one of them but there are others that are all over the planet um subatomic you know colliders are everywhere and the question you have to ask with the one for, say in switzerland the large hadron collider is you know it's pretty much circular the question you ask is how many ley lines is that technological uh device buried deep within the uh the bedrock of that mm. country how many of those ley lines are being intersected by that but because that that's really what the key is here that how much disruption is going on and we know that somehow those frequencies and vibrations are being accessed with the large hadron collider and we know they're trying to access um portals shall we say into the infernal regions of the lower astral and I, I, I just to say on that that that's I, I, I look now I definitely agree that the symbolism and definitely things that suggest that, but you know their official story of what the CERN is that they're exploding particles and you know trying to find the Big Bang theory and and say with the Large Hadron Collider what they attempt to do and what they actually can do are two separate things. When you have supremely narcissistic, completely egocentric wealthy individuals who think they can control planet earth they can somehow control the divine creation the solar system and everything in between incredibly um overblown large egos at play and i just think on that talking point steve just say that yeah i mean this this that's what people need to understand it's the control of god these people that want to control reality they do they want to play god they want to be god and they want that control. One of the most interesting ley lines I found was the St. Michael's line, and that runs right through Britain. That's and right. that was actually one of, was Jesus Christ was actually meant to have walked this line as well. And I yeah. do believe when the true history of Jesus, that actually he walked ley lines to actually reactivate them. He he left Judea. It wasn't called Israel at the time, Judea, which is a, a, a Latin name. Um, he he left that area in the Levant of Western Asia for 30 years yeah. and travelled. And there were there's many documents and books that have been written connecting Yeshua ben Yosef or the Lord Jesus Christ to locations actually in Japan, parts of the People's wow. Republic of China, northern India, coming back through and then back through where Afghanistan is today in Central Asia, Iran or Persia in Central Asia, and then coming down into 
the fertile crescent you know the the arabian peninsula and then coming back late in, in you know when he was a uh, an older man to you know preach his ministry which then became the gospels of matthew mark luke and john in the new testament so they're not historically correct i feel but he he was i mean he, you, you know you, you take a look at the work of people like the laws canon Yes. You know, and, and over 40 years uh, as an expert in uh, regressive hypnotherapy and thousands of clients and, and case studies that that and she was an incredible woman, Dolores Cannon, an, an absolute she genius was. in her own right. And I've always been fascinated by her work on, you know, people that go, undergo hypnotherapy. They they recall all their alien abduction experiences. Some of them, though, um, actually recall their time in Judea. And, you know, she, she wrote two wow. books based on a lot of these case studies from her clients. And so, you know, we know that he was connected um, to the Essene, uh, which was like a mystical religious order, basically, that preserves sacred wisdom. Right. Um, and it may have been the case that Yeshua ben Yosef had an awareness of Gnosticism, which predates Christianity, Although I have no idea whether he himself was actively studying Gnosticism. I have just, no idea. Um, and, and just, uh, you know, we don't want to go off the point too much about the ley lines, but the Bible was written over a 700 year period. Is that correct, Steve? That is correct. Absolutely. And during that time, you had all, you know, all the information on the biblical patriarchs in the Old Testament, uh, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were written yep. and rewritten um, hundreds of occasions and in different languages. You have to remember that the language Jesus spoke was basically Aramaic. He was fluent in Aramaic, Roman, Latin. It's believed classical Greek and Hebrew. So yeah. he, you know, he was an extremely intelligent, uh, learned individual. Um, we know, for example, that there are seventy-two books missing from the Bible. Ah, like, uh, a lot of the archetypal symbolism in some of those books does relate to. Uh, the geomagnetic ley lines it it relates to a, a, a far more ancient time you know a golden period that once existed on this planet i'd say the golden period was when the vast majority of humans or homo sapiens or whatever the phrase is had a collective and quite profound understanding of the ley lines they knew how to collectively and individually interact with them they weren't surprised frightened or worried about astral spirits appearing and many of these today mm -hmm. I mean, coming to you, you know, European folklore, Native American folklore, and so forth, as what we would class as dwarves and fairies and elves and etc. You know, supernatural uh, life forms. So, yeah, yeah, we've been conditioned, removed out of this. It's almost like you know the Lord of the Rings movies and all this kind of books and. But the fairy tales, yeah, they exist and they existed on this planet. Uh, there is obviously not hard evidence of that, but there is definitely a lot suggesting that they did. Ley lines, particularly Britain, is full uh, full of a lot of ley lines. And why would you say that is, Steve? Why would you? Why is there a lot of ley centres in Britain? What is the reason for that? The positioning, obviously, London, Londinium was built in a particular spot. And the reason why the financial centres are there is, yeah. you know, because of the convergence of ley lines. But Mm. All over Britain, there is a particularly. This is a, a homeland for for geomagnetics. So, explain a little bit about that. Well, I mean, for starters, uh, the actual original name in the Irish Gaelic for London was Lewinden, and it basically, oh, really, yeah, it actually translates to shining fortress or shining <laughs> dwelling. So, it, it was the it was the the hearth. It was the centralized uh, gathering space, if you like, of the Druids. And in London, what was the place, do you think, in London where the Druid High Council gathered? St. Paul's? No, Westminster Abbey. Right, okay. Well, they, so, yeah, right. yeah, so that and so it was mainly marsh and salt, salt marsh, and um, and there was, there was there was copses there, which is small clumps of trees, and that's where the Druid shrines and the Druid groves were. So right. it was, it, London is literally right in the center of the navel where the uh, probably the largest number of geomagnetic ley lines converge anywhere on planet earth mm. and number two the land mass of britain is obviously a small land mass so the smaller the land mass if it's in an area where there's a lot of convergence there's a higher probability of a lot of more um dimensional uh portals opening into the astral plane because there's so many converging ley lines there so it's classed as a very special place 
we have to remember that Ireland was always called the Emerald Isle. So it was seen as this, this place of magical, um, crystalline spiritual beauty. And Britain was the scepter dial, the scepter representing the orb of sacred wisdom. The scepter is a druid instrument. It wasn't originally carried by the kings or the nobility or, or the crown. Yeah. So it represented the druids, uh, the high druid councils would carry that along ley lines in certain areas where Westminster Abbey is today, York uh, Cathedral is um, in, in the United Kingdom as well. And in other key locations like Canterbury Cathedral in Kent in South East England. These were all powerful, powerful, powerful ley lines, yeah. yeah very very powerful. powerful ley lines, yeah, coming off the yeah. North Kent Downs in that area. So they would carry that during certain ceremonies signifying the high knowledge held in that orb now i to go into why the druids geometrically chose a sphere or an orb it's believed it was made of clear quartz pure quartz crystal or okay. amethyst which is purple purple quartz crystal sorry yeah we're understanding this science but through the metals and the crystals they would have used they would have been able to activate certain energies and you know obviously I'm no scientist, but there is definitely a correlation between mercury, copper, and yeah. the, the you know these the way these interact and the etheric energy. Quartz crystal can can enhance energy as well. That's right. So these right. would have would have. I, oh, it. We're all still learning this, guys. So you know, <laughs> anybody, any information, please put it in the comments. Please put it below. It's a vast uh, subject. No, nobody can stop learning from this because it's like turning the pages of an ancient tomb. You know, you're, 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 you're blowing the dust off it, and it's this huge book with this ornate cover with you know a, a, a lovely tapestry on the front, and the, each each page is, is a thick parchment with you know eloquent uh, typeface and diagrams in it. And you're going, "Wow, what's this?" Then you turn another page, "Wow, what's this?" It's that's what we're doing. It's like we're on a journey of constant remembrance with this information. And it and is important not to mind. fear the, the problem. The biggest problem people have is the fear of releasing this information. And often that is due to the fact that people feel the fear of ridicule. They feel the fear of questioning that they're going to yeah. be put down, rejected, That's pushed right. out. And mm. there's nothing wrong with questioning things. Obviously, you know, we're well aware of the far out stupid theories out there. I won't mention any, but there are some ridiculous <laughs> theories out there and people each to their own and people may believe what they believe. But there is there is an earth science, 100 percent that has been here on this planet and it has been rejected. Maybe, maybe for reasons we're still understanding. Maybe we yeah. have to understand this on another level, but they have been suppressed and put back and ley lines are absolutely incredible and mind-blowing and the more you look into ancient history and you look into history it will actually make you more fascinated and more interested in it that's right like yeah i mean absolutely zach and i was just thinking there from uh you know all the all the the historical perspectives concerning um british druidism and irish druidism and how during the the uh, the evening time in the sum in the summertime, I suppose perhaps late, you know, when it was drier and warmer, and the light lasted longer into the evening, you know, around the the summer solstice, the twenty first of June each year, and there's so many accounts from British folklore and Irish folklore of druid priests and the maybe the frequencies and vibrations of planet Earth were oscillating at a faster rate, you know, thousands of years ago, yeah, because the actual ley lines were much more visible. They were, they were classed as having a, a bluish tinge. So I like, mean, I've got a point there, Steve, can I just say, yeah. sorry, can I just say that the brain has been so conditioned because yeah. you, you can't program this reality out there, but you can program this brain. Yeah. So if you program this over generations, over a two generation period, you mm. can make that first generation forget what world they've lived in. Uh, absolutely. You know? And that's yeah, what's cool. happened. And you're yeah. right about the frequency. It's this this frequency that we we've been tuned out of. Yeah. And you know, and well, it's been deactivated. So put the pyramids on the planet. So the, the you know the pyramid of the sun, the pyramid of the moon in the Vasoko Valley in Bosnia, the pyramids that exist in the Shenzi province of central, I think it's in central China around that area. All these areas. I mean, you look at the pyramids on the Yucatan Peninsula in you know parts of Guatemala and 
Mexico, they weren't just religious monuments that people go, oh, they look very nice. They, you know, there's been many photographs taken of uh, beams of light coming out the tops of these stepped pyramids or ziggurats in Central America mm. and the, the four sided pyramidal structures in hundreds of locations around planet Earth. So we know that there was a, the frequency and the vibration of the planet was much higher than it is today. It was so the attunement process was different. Um, more human beings had activated pineal glands than they do today. Their diets were organic. They weren't eating processed foods. There wasn't all the electromagnetic smog that we get today in towns and cities that further dilutes and, and distorts those natural um, energetic um, oscillations that are constantly present there. And I think when you look back, well, I was just saying a minute ago about how once the the frequencies and, and vibrations thousands of years ago were literally vibrating at a much faster rate. So you go, for example, to Avebury Circle and, yeah. you know, the Druid priest would be seen surrounded by these, these beams of light that would go around the furrows in the ground following the actual furrows, which had been constructed around the standing stones to direct certain parts of those ley lines earth lights would then appear these were orbs of light some of which were pale orange and pale yellow in color various sizes that would hover and move around these stone circles same thing would happen at the roll right stones up in oxfordshire mm. um same thing would happen around stonehenge on salisbury plain and you can think you know anywhere you can think in parts of cornwall or anywhere else in the united kingdom where there are megalithic stone structures they all served more or less the same purpose the yeah. menatol for example in in cornwall is a good example of that so yeah absolutely it was a and very it's the same it's, yeah. it's the same with churches i mean go, relating it to tartaria and all that all the spires there's one thing mm. people need to understand is they're all the same angles there was a specific angle that was used uh the, the exact name of it, it i can't think off the top of my head but there is a name for that angle and that that's the the I would say the Tartarian influence, that this Tartarian influence that went around the world, east, west, everywhere, was this tuning into these etheric energies and tuning into that. So, But this particular type of technology, which originally would have come from Hyperborea and then obviously developed into Tartaria, because there is no doubt that Tartaria existed and Tartaria was a place that was a, a fully functioning civilization it was absolutely huge but it's disappeared it's been erased if you if you don't know about tartaria please watch the hidden history series uh the episode on tartaria it's incredible because this landmass was absolutely huge and it had worldwide influence all the buildings you see today the spires why were spires built in such ornate ways and such unique architecture 500 years ago, 800 years ago, 1,000 years ago even sometimes. This is, which is called neo-Gothic architecture. But mm. it, this is, <laughs> or the medieval architecture. Almost as well, like people do not understand how advanced this is. As I was mentioning with Tartaria, tar Tartarians would have fully known about these ley lines around the world. And I would imagine there would have been a map and locations where they would specifically have gone known to activate and do these kind of rituals or stuff to kind of re reintegrate this energy. But what do you think about that, Steve? I, I agree. I totally agree with that. I mean, my perspective, from what I, I can sense about how great Tataria utilised the ley lines was they, they were interconnected. A lot of their buildings obviously were built on key essential uh, ley line convergence areas. But two things here you know we know there's connections between the prehistoric giants that walked the earth and many of the megalithic structures and these vast edifices these huge ornate uh, greco-roman buildings that were so prevalent in the civilization of great tataria mm. so we also know that tatarian is the only civilization that i'm aware of where they're and all the, the various carvings, the various diagrams that show clearly human beings, Tatarian, Aryans, standing next to giants, male and female giants. Number two on the list in terms of 
that aspect is that obviously they use sound healing and so it's a somatic based occult technology mm. now that technology today a lot of that can still be seen in the secretive processes that tibetan buddhists using singing bowls who right. were able to levitate vast massive rocks they can then position them into place to stack them into making walls. They yeah. can also use them to to, to, to to literally cut pieces of rock off to create exact uh, measurements, and they can disintegrate the rock to microfine rock dust. All of that came off really uh, the occult technology of the Tatarians. So the, this is how, if you think about these ley lines, they built using these technologies with the assistance of many of these giants these huge structures over many, many thousands of years, and they were built in in very important um, ley line areas. So there was a there's a real co a connection between the ley lines, the giants, the Tatarians, and their cymetic or sound based occult technology. And I find that fascinating, really. Yeah. So the the one per, you know one we did study in the hidden history series was John Hutchinson. I mean that right. that really is that guy incredible yeah. experiments he done it, it, and yeah. you can clearly see the technology is all there uh, understand that different frequencies so people don't understand frequencies we've got a range a bandwidth for frequencies and through sound some sounds are inaudible you can't hear them and they will affect your body and affect your energy tissues and cell cellular form maybe without even realizing this is why we have these these masts and towers and aerials that can affect our auras, affect our energy. So understand that the, this is very real just because you can't see it. Um, sure, yeah. I will be giving more examples of this on frequencies and stuff uh, and talking about this more. But these low frequencies that we can't hear, we should be very careful to them a lot of people don't realize how powerful frequencies are uh you know i mean and and we're actually all the time in this reality we're interacting with frequencies we're interacting frequencies on a television right now there is a frequency running through this channel this computer and this is affecting our whole structure of our bodies if we could put a microscope on the cellular structure of our bodies as these fields are coming into these frequencies we would see probably sometimes quite disturbing things happen because there's yeah. a lot of radiation and a lot of things flying around we're not aware of that's, so that's right why we is. have yeah. to be very self-aware and going back to what we were saying at the beginning about you know being healthy and and keeping your body in check and keeping your mind healthy as well so you don't allow these frequencies to come into you so these frequencies are all existing and we can harmonize with these ley lines around us we can harmonize ourselves with these ley lines if we're aware to these frequencies we that's need it. to yeah yeah and, and that's it and when you agree steve it's it's down to that awareness but that people are so docile to these these this world around them in the sense of what is actually there because they're so programmed and obviously more and more people are getting programmed into their smart devices so they're looking down on their phones you know they're not actually even acknowledging the environments they're in no. so again understand guys that that a mobile phone is a frequency and the moment you look at that phone you are tuned into that frequency you know the, the, there's such a vast amount of information discuss on the geomagnetic ley line phenomena it, you, there's only so much you can cover in a, in a short space of time but it's been really really productive i've really enjoyed uh, uh engaging in this and sharing this information conveying the information getting it out there and having the, this this discussion has been very interesting indeed it really has good well, it's been lovely, or as always, Steve, to talk with you. And please, everybody, please purchase our book, Mysterious Realities, which is now available in paperback. And you can also download immediately, if you like, on ebook. And we do have another book coming out very soon as well, but we'll talk more about that in the next one. Please join our membership if you would like further information and insights and knowledge into the channel and want to delve deeper into these subjects. Please join the membership. And until next week, I will see you later. And a goodbye from Mr. Demon. Thank you for coming on, Stephen. Thanks, everybody, for to, to coming on to watch us discuss this fascinating information concerning the ley lines. Thank you, everybody. Until next week, I will see you then.
See you later. Bye-bye.